Hey, Retcon Raider here. Today I thought I'd talk about, you guessed it, Phoenix Point. The crowdfunding campaign for Phoenix Point is still a few weeks from ending, and Snapshot Games has been hard at work releasing all sorts of new information about the game, often on an almost daily basis. So I've been hard at work trying to keep up with everything, so I can continue putting it all together into comprehensive overview videos, for your convenience. So, with that in mind, I thought we'd talk a little bit about the gear and equipment that we're going to be seeing in Phoenix Point next year. Now, much like in my last video, I should warn you that a lot of this information is pretty rough. Snapshot Games is still actively designing and prototyping many elements of the game, so a lot of this is just speculation or guesswork on my part. And a lot of it could end up changing before the game launches. But, that said, let's dive in. First, let's take a look at the screenshots we received last year after demo footage of the Big Egg incident was shown at select conventions. Now, obviously a lot of this footage was done as a mock-up, showing what the final game might look like, but it still gives us a good idea of what the developers are thinking. Here, for example, we can get a pretty good idea of the weapon's UI. The weapon's name is displayed at the top above an icon displaying the weapon's appearance. Below that, there are four slots that display icons for the weapon's attributes. The two rows below that display the weapon's base damage at three separate ranges, as well as the weapon's maximum range. All the way at the bottom, we can see what appears to be a movement indicator, which presumably tracks how many spaces the character can move with their current action. This could be pretty handy, because if you recall from my combat overview video, the player may end up having to change their movement action mid-turn if they happen to spot a new enemy. To the left of that, there are two icons which obviously show other weapons the soldier currently has equipped. It also makes it obvious that the UI is just a non-functional placeholder, because in some of these early shots, the UI clearly shows a different weapon than the one the soldier is actually wielding. But, focusing on what's showing on the UI, this soldier is equipped with what appears to be an assault pistol called the Eurotech A2. It's hard to say what the attribute icon is supposed to represent, some sort of snowflake, I guess, but we can see that the weapon has a maximum range of 16 spaces and inflicts 12 base damage at short range, 9 base damage at medium range, and 7 base damage at long range. Another image from the convention footage shows this, the XLR Shuriken Sniper Rifle. Again, it's hard to say exactly what that weapon attribute icon is supposed to be, but the rest of the entry tells us that this weapon has a much longer range of 30 spaces. The damage is roughly comparable to the Eurotech A2, but it inflicts peak damage at medium to long range. Since this sniper rifle has appeared in other images where it was identified as the high-powered sniper rifle, it's probably safe to assume that this will be the default starting sniper rifle for the game. By extension, that seems to imply that the Eurotech A2 will be the default pistol, and this as-of-yet-unnamed assault rifle is likely to be the default rifle. This concept art shows what is called the AR-1001, a weapon that has been referred to as the Goss Rifle. This makes it clear that we can expect to see a tiered weapon system similar to the one featured in the XCOM titles, likely gated by the research system that Snapshot Games is still designing. Two other gifts show off additional Goss weapons, one a sniper rifle and the other a shotgun. Next, we have flamethrowers, which Julian Gollop mentioned in interviews as far back as last year. One such weapon appeared in this piece of concept art that was released at the beginning of the current crowdfunding campaign. But just recently, Snapshot Games released not just one piece of concept art for a flame-based weapon, but three. These three pieces of concept art show three separate flamethrowers. The FL-860FD, which appears to be a basic man-portable flamethrower with two integrated jerry cans for fuel. The FM-530RD, which features a larger backpack-mounted fuel tank and a lovely flame guard. And the FM-760CF, which seems to have a much more futuristic design and uses what appears to be a high-pressure gas tank as a fuel source. In an older interview with Rock Paper Shotgun, Julian Gollop also mentioned that there would be incendiary rounds for conventional weapons, which seems to imply that the game will support a specialty ammunition system. He also mentioned that the type of damage a weapon inflicts will be important because certain creatures or pieces of terrain may be more, or less, vulnerable to certain types of damage. In my last video, I mentioned that they were developing stealth weapons, which would work alongside the game's stealth system. That's where these two pieces of concept art come in. 
The XB-105 and the XBS-2100 are two examples of crossbows that the player might be able to research and build for their soldiers. And these weapons will allow the player to make attacks without automatically revealing their position to other nearby enemies. The XBS-2100 notably features a scope, making it clear that it's the crossbow equivalent of a sniper rifle. We do know that there will be some strange weapons, such as these three unique genetically engineered living weapons that are available to anyone who's backing the crowdfunding campaign at $40 or higher. For those who miss out on the crowdfunding campaign, they'll still be available a month after the game releases as a piece of post-release DLC. We don't know much about these things just yet, but the official campaign page notes that they each fire a different type of special ammunition. Acid, poison, and digestive mist. The weapon in the middle has been identified as the weapon that will fire poison darts, but it's hard to say what the other two weapons will fire. Perhaps the one with the organ-like ammunition sack will be the one that fires digestive mist. In a more recent screenshot, we can see that the weapon UI has been greatly simplified. This soldier is carrying a minigun identified as the Browning M2HB. The very basic information below it appears to show the weapon's base damage and range, but little else. This heavy weapon could be the same one pictured in this piece of concept art, on a soldier who's wearing what appears to be a full-body powered exoskeleton. On that same piece of concept art, it's worth noting that two of the soldiers are clearly carrying melee weapons. This sporty ninja is carrying a pair of somewhat impractical-looking single-edged swords, while this soldier is carrying what appears to be an African kukri. Although there's no guarantee that either of these weapons will make it into the final game, Julian Gollop has recently confirmed that melee combat will be in the game. It might be fair to assume that melee will work well with the game's stealth system. Another commonly showcased heavy weapon is this thing, something which has been identified as a shoulder-launched missile system. It was worn by some of the soldiers shown in last year's convention footage, and we even got to see it in action against a Crab Queen. It's important to note that this footage represents the Big Egg incident, which we know involved two mercenaries provided by Vanadium Inc., the corporation that later became the heavily militarized New Jericho faction that the players will have to deal with. That may imply that these nifty missile launchers will only be obtainable from New Jericho. And speaking of New Jericho, we obviously have this thing. I've shown it before. The eight-man armored personnel carrier, which has been identified as a vehicle of New Jericho design. Although we have not yet reached the stretch goal that will unlock vehicles like this, we still have over three weeks to reach it. And since we're on the subject of vehicles, I know I touched on this in my last video too, but it's worth repeating. In an interview with Polygon, Julian Gollop confirmed that the first air vehicle the players will get is a refitted helicopter. Later down the line, however, the player will gain access to a much more advanced air vehicle, such as the Phoenix-built armored VTOL troop carrier. An interesting side note is that Julian Gollop has yet to confirm whether the game will have aerial interception mechanics, but the presence of obvious weaponry on this dropship seems promising. We do know that the aliens don't start off with any flying units, but that they will eventually gain some later in the game. So, interceptions may be a possibility. We also know that Julian Gollop specifically cited strafing and bombing runs as one of the possible tactical cards that the player could unlock for use in ground battles. So, maybe that's what the dropship's guns will be used for. As I mentioned in the last video, Julian Gollop has also confirmed that the game will feature a multi-part body armor system which will allow a player to customize their soldier's appearance with various armor components. These components will actually provide varying amounts of protection to different parts of their body, while also theoretically providing some other bonuses, such as special abilities, buffs, or extra inventory space. This concept art shows several different potential soldier loadouts, but it's more clearly illustrated by this official GIF, which shows off several possible equipment combos in rapid succession. Note how he sports two different types of shoulder pads, one clearly armored, and the other designed to hold more equipment. Likewise, his legs go from bare, to sporting basic knee pads, to sporting massive clunky boots, that Julian Gollop identified as being part of a powered exoskeleton, possibly a lighter version of the exoskeleton shown in that earlier piece of concept art. It's also worth noting that at varying points, the soldier is shown sporting high-tech eyewear, we know that this monocular lens, visible in several other screenshots, provides vision assistance, 
which implies that the full set of goggles will provide even more benefits, perhaps making it easier to spot concealed enemies or to more reliably hit enemies from longer ranges. And of course we have this, the Alien Chitin Armor Set. Much like the Alien Living Gun set, the Chitin Armor set will be free to anyone that backs the game at $40 or higher. But it will also be available to non-backers one month after the game's full release. Unlike the Living Gun set, however, the Chitin Armor set is apparently purely cosmetic, with no mechanical advantages over normal armor. Though official word from Snapshot Games is that it will make you look totally badass. Finally, that brings us to one of the areas that we know the least about. There have been some vague references to the player being able to field support drones during missions, and in the recent interview between Julian Gollop at Unstable Voltage, we finally got to see one. Right here. This strange circular thing on the soldier's belt has been identified as a centipede spotter bot, a colorful name that invites all manner of speculation. Perhaps it's just a device that grants a passive bonus to spotting concealed enemies, but I like to think that it's something the player will actually be able to deploy like a mobile camera, possibly allowing the player to keep tabs on remote areas or to watch his own back. That's pretty much everything that's appeared in the concept art that's been released so far, but there is one more thing that's worth noting. On Reddit, and again during a recent interview with RPG Codex, Julian Gollop was asked about the Marsec Momaster 4000. In both cases, Gollop expressed a fondness for the oddball weapon. And on Reddit, he stated that he wanted to think of something similar to put into Phoenix Point. Something that would turn out to be a fairly effective weapon in the right situation, even though it's not evident. So, does that mean we'll be getting the chance to literally mow down mutants with high-powered gardening equipment? Will we be able to arm our soldiers with cordless hedge trimmers, ruthless Reuben style? If the vehicle stretch goal is unlocked, can we anticipate getting our hands on armored riding mowers? Obviously, we have no real information on this, but boy, is it fun to think about. Unfortunately, that's all I've got for now. Like most other aspects of the game, Snapshot Games and Julian Gollop are still actively designing most of the equipment system, and there's only so much concept art for me to endlessly speculate over. So, until I get some more solid information, this is Retcon Raider, signing off. And remember, while I do love talking about Phoenix Point, you can keep up with all the latest news by visiting the official website or the official crowdfunding page on FIG. Links are in the description.